Hello lovelies, it is Kenya once again coming to you for a Friday in the Furious Five. So today I'll be talking to you about my readjusting or what some people call repatriating. <laughs> becoming a repatriate of the United States of America. It's been it's been good, it's been great and it's been rough and bumpy. But I want to talk to you today about five things that I just wasn't expecting um coming back. So number 1, number 1 is how much things really don't change. And that includes people, that includes landmarks, that includes routines, a few new buildings here, a few new initiatives there, but for the most part, you know, it's coming back home, it's the same old, same old, which can be a comforting thing, and then it could also be a, like, the same old, same old, right, nothing new. So, number two, so this is talking about friends, talking about family, they, people love to miss you when you're not here. People love to miss you when you're not here, um, I had so many friends, you know, emailing me all the time. Oh my God, I missed you. When are you coming back? And quite frankly, some of it was a little surprising to me and a little comical because it's like, when I was here, we didn't kick it like that. So how the heck are you missing me? But a lot of people would say they miss me. But then now that I'm back, I've heard from like half of those people, probably less than half, you know? So a lot of my close friends I've hung out with, a lot of... Um, some of my the professional network that I have, people that I know and would do lunch with or coffee with, they've gotten with me who are interested in my story, who want to see me and know what's up. But really, and, and of course, family. I spend time with family. But really, what they say is true. Once a person sees you a couple of times or once they know that they're back, they're good. <laughs> they're not worried about you anymore. Like, seriously, I had people counting down the days that I came back. Where are they now? I don't know. So moving right along, number three, there's a saying that goes something like, once you leave, once you leave home, you can never go back. Like there's no going back home. And I don't think, maybe the author meant that literally, but what I'm thinking what they really meant was, for example, so before I left for Korea, you know, I was working, I was freelance writing, I was working part-time as a news reporter, I was teaching hip-hop dance classes, I was teaching yoga, I was very involved in my community, and I ran with circles of entrepreneurs, artists, community organizers, and so I was very like out and about, woman about town always into different things, networking, you know, really into just enjoying life. And in Korea, I got to get out, but in different ways. In Korea, I was more like uh, a professional tourist or, or a forever tourist. But now that I'm back, you know, things are different. I didn't have a job coming back. So I live with my mother. Uh, she lives very far out. She lives in an area that I did not live in, you know. So a lot of things are different. My life is not the same. So the life that I thought I was coming back to is very, very different. The life I thought I was coming back to does not exist. It no longer exists. That was then, and this is now. Time has changed. You can't put the old life you used to have into a bottle and expect to open it and have that same old good old drink. It's gone. It's not there. You have to start over. You have to start over. And that's maybe something that they don't tell you. <laughs> Those are things that you don't know when you try to come back home. So, number four... <sighs> Number four is, you know, shit gets real, man. You, you're back to reality in a sense. I mean, you definitely are living a real life when, when you're away abroad. I definitely, life was real for me in Korea. But coming back here, not having a job, not having my own car like I used to, looking for a job, going on interviews and not getting offers, like it's real. The money that I saved, I'm living off of it. So that and not replenishing it. <laughs> so you do the math on that. So things is real and it gets it gets kind of hard, you know, trying to keep a positive attitude. But then it's like, what other choice do you have? So what has helped me is I saved enough to be able to travel while I'm back. 
So that has helped tremendously because travel just gives me new life each and every time I do it. So number five is, you know, for me, it's what do you do next? Oh, no, scratch that. This is what I really want number five to be. So it still deals with travel. Number five is when you come back home, people expect you to stay put. So me, I've always loved travel. If anybody knows me, they know that about me. And so that's why I jumped on the opportunity to live in Korea because I'm like, this is great. I will get to travel and work and live in another country. It's awesome. And now that I'm back, I haven't stopped traveling not one bit. I've traveled to six countries in 2016. But the thing is, people expect you to stay put and what they don't understand about people who love to travel, there are some people who, you know, live out of the country and they do it strictly for work and it's not necessarily a joy. But then there are people who absolutely love to travel and it's just in your blood. It's something you need and that's what people don't understand. They think, okay, well, you're back home now. You need to sit down. Why are you still traveling? How much money you got? Where are you getting this money from? How are you doing that? And it's really not a matter of that. It's just a matter of, you know, people do what they have to do to be able to travel. So they, we have a, a bunch of different ways and I can make a video about that actually. But when you love to travel, you find a way. And some people say, oh, you got to make sacrifices about this or you got to make sacrifices about that. Yeah, it could be sacrifice, sacrificial or it could not be. It could just be planning and budgeting smartly as I did. I saved money. I knew that I would be back here. I knew that I would be restless and be really depressed if I couldn't travel. So I made sure that I had enough money to do that. Um, yeah, people, people don't get it. People don't get that people love to travel and people, it, it's, it's, an, it's a necessity for some of us that we have to go out and see new things. Even if it's right here in my own backyard, I like trying new things and exploring, um, you know, the place where I am without, without just doing the same old, same old all the time. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. That is the Friday and the Furious Five for this week. So five things that I didn't expect coming home. Until next time, deuces.